Good evening, my friends. Good evening. I hope you're all having a great Monday and a great start to your week. The low rumbling in the background, probably Gen just using his local uh, preferred method of transportation. We've got a huge number of people in the chat today. Let's say some hellos. We've got Jaffris in the chat. Good evening to you. We have first time chatter. Tada for real. Good to see you in the chat. Welcome to the channel. Um, Jaffras asks if you added an underscore to your name. Maybe you've been here before and you've changed your name. Quite possibly. Okay. Um, we've got Justy303 in the chat and he's also um, <laughs> redeemed where the ears. So we'll stick those on in just a second. Um, Jaffras. Trank0007, good evening to you, and I believe that's everyone. And we have Spiper as well in the chat. Good day, everyone. Need to run a quick errand before joining in. Okay, whilst I put the ears on, let's run a quick recap. So, last time out, we entered the world of Riven, which, incidentally, I have literally only just realised, thanks to Tardar for reals message, the V in Riven is a 5? That's news to me. <laughs> so cool. That sort of shows you the level of observant that we're, uh, that we're getting to on this channel. But yeah, okay. So, Riven. We are here. And there are... Oh, wow, Justy cheered me 500 bits. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, so we've, we've entered Riven, Atrus has given us a book and has told us that everything's explained in there, and we're going to be reading that in just a minute. Um, we were not able initially to get through the temple, and we were pushed first to Alcatraz Island, the actual final island from the original game. We went and visited the dome. We've not been to the top of the dome yet. Uh, destroyed a bridge. That was fun. Then opened the dome. Went over to the village. Couldn't get into the village. Saw some cool new totems that weren't in the original game either. Found ourselves a nice lens to see some hidden information. And have now made our way to Boiler Island. We have only just arrived and we've not explored it yet. Okay, we've also had Everett Depanga join us and Star Shadow X2. It's a full house of people. Now, if you are joining us on YouTube in the future, this is the episode that you want to bookmark for your sleepy time, right? Because we're doing audiobook adventures, first of all. Um, so if you want to skip me reading this book, you can go to this time code, and you won't have missed anything except me reading. <laughs> okay, we are starting in uh, the year 10. Well, I assume. Actually, no, I believe... Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, no, Atrus, Atrus is a big fan of doing year, month, day, isn't he? Ooh, a true computer scientist after my own heart. Lovely. Right, so these are year, month, day, these dates. They held for more than 30 years, but the corrections I made to Riven have finally failed. The island has resumed the familiar pattern of decay that is the hallmark of my father's work. I must now race to implement this new patch before it's too late. I only hope that my revised theories our sound. The revisions to Riven completed. There are still a number of minor adjustments that need to be made, but the basic corrections are in and should be working. Something's not right. I've been monitoring the instruments for several hours now, but have thus far observed no change. It's possible I've made an error, though I've checked my entry against my pre-notation and it can find no discrepancy. I haven't slept in nearly three days, so it may be that I'm just not seeing it. If the fault is with my foundational assumptions, however, perhaps after a short rest, I will see something. 
The journals are easier to read in the remake. Really though, the journals. Deciphering Catherine's handwriting. Hardest puzzle in the whole of Riven. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Atrus with... Uh, sorry, no, not Atrus. The Stranger standing there with his book. Being like, ah! Right. Success! It appears that my repairs have been effective after all. The gateway image has become noticeably clearer, and although it's impossible to know this with absolute certainty, the island seems to have quieted itself. Just a few more weeks of work, and I should be free at last to go there myself and attempt to bring Catherine back. The past eight months have left me little time to devise a strategy for getting her out of there. There's been no sign from her in all that time. I only hope that... No, I must assume she's all right, lest my fears undermine my efforts. And uh, Atrus has been, uh, yeah, shedding some, uh, shedding some tears there. I did not create the Age of Riven. Unlike my father, I have never presumed to have such power, and yet the future of all those who live there has fallen into my hands. So far, I've managed to read the page before it turns. The island continues to appear stable, and I would like to believe that I have saved a dying world, but the theories of one individual cannot support the lives of real people indefinitely. I must get everyone off Riven as soon as possible. The problem now is Gen. I'll never be able to rescue Catherine and relocate the island as if he is still the man he used to be. I haven't seen him in over 30 years, but given his history, I must assume that he's still a threat. His myopic mission to restore the Denis civilization has left too many innocent cultures dying in its wake, a pattern that would no doubt continue were he to ever escape the confines of Riven. For more than three decades now, the universe has been safe from his corruptive influence because no one has been able to leave that ill-fated age. The last linking book out of Riven having been lost in the Star Physio upon my return to Mist. That was our intention, to maroon my father on Riven by removing all existing links to other worlds. And since the libraries containing the vast and intricate knowledge needing to construct linking books remained largely confined to the ruins of Denis, he would be trapped there for the remainder of his lifetime and effectively segregated from the countless other worlds he would have invaded. This is what we achieved, but the way it fell was no one's ideal. And although the sting of it has gradually faded over the years, the deep pain of the responsibility for what actually came to pass has never left me. At the time, it all seemed so clear Gen's destructive path could not be allowed to continue. But it was never my wish that the innocent inhabitants of Riven, who had already suffered so much, would be the ones to have to pay for it. But enough. To dwell in the past is to die in the present, and the situation is not the same as it was then. The knowledge I've acquired since that time has yet to be factored into the equation. I think I have a solution for rescuing Catherine. Why it did not occur to me sooner, I do not know, unless the thought had been pushed out with the memory of my sons. A prison book. Many years ago, during a hunting expedition through the ruins of Denis, I chanced upon a formula for a most unusual type of book. Unfortunately, as my father was then in the habit of confiscating my discoveries, I had to leave it behind. Years later, however, as part of my efforts to protect the vulnerable worlds linked to the books in my library, I was pleased to find I could still recall most of the formula and with a little experimentation quickly succeeded in creating one of those devices myself. The procedure is actually quite simple. By altering key lines of text, but slightly, a normal linking book's connection can be partially severed, such that anyone who attempts to use the book will be permanently trapped in the dark void of the link, unless someone else then uses the book, at which point that person becomes trapped 
and the first person displaced back into the world. Okay, at this point, I'm going to have to ask, is this the same text that's in the original? Because I'm not 100% convinced it is. Has this book been rewritten? It has been a little while since we played OG River, of course. Maybe it is, though. You think they are slightly changed? Perhaps. <clears throat> it sounds very familiar if not. Oh, well, fair enough. Slight modifications have been made. Interesting. The technique can be applied to books that have already been written, changes to the text being so slight that anyone who is unfamiliar with the code will be able to un will be unable to detect them. If my father is indeed unchanged, what better bait could there be than a book that appeared to be a link back here to Denis? Trouble. My nightly analysis of the island's condition has revealed that the tremors have started again. The pattern, however, is new. The disturbances are the result of the changes I have made. This did not, at first, concern me. Tremors of this type were one of the possible side effects I'd anticipated during the initial phase of the island's readjustments. But in order to verify my assumptions, I recalculated, incorporating the new data. The results were not what I expected. The damage to the understructure is more extensive than I'd realised. I can no longer go to Riven as planned. Catherine, forgive me. I must act while I have the time. The signs are as yet barely visible, but there is no question that the island's deterioration is accelerating. Total collapse is imminent, unless I can keep ahead of it, and that is becoming increasingly difficult to do. Yeah, the big red brackets. To draw your attention to particular aspects of the text, I guess. With every passing moment, I gain a clearer picture of the incredible chaos that my father's shortcuts have yielded. But it's a dismaying process. The complexity of the problem is overwhelming. There is no good end to this. The last few days have convinced me that the collapse of Riven is inevitable, and that at best I can only strive to delay it in the hopes that at some point the island will become stable enough to risk a rescue attempt. I think I've come up with a way to subdue the tremors. It will require my exclusive attention for at least a month or two, so it may be necessary to discontinue these journal entries for a while. Six days later, however, something truly miraculous has happened. Beyond all conceivable probability, someone has found my lost, missed linking book and freed me from this prison. I immediately realised that this could be the solution to my dilemma, and I believe my mysterious benefactor is willing to assist me. The logistics of such a scheme are formidable, but the fact that it may now be possible for me to continue my repairs to Riven while also proceeding with my original intent to find Catherine has renewed my hopes. The brackets are the TLDRs, are they? Oh, great, excellent. The last few days have left me little time to work out the remaining problems with sending someone else to River. It did occur to me, however, that if a way could be found to signal me once again had been captured, it would no longer be necessary to take a real linking book to River and thereby risk the possibility of inadvertently freeing him. The de The deteriorated state of the gateway image would seem to make the use of visual signal impossible, yet the picture remains a reliable indicator of Riven's condition. Nonetheless, by measuring and interpreting variations in noise patterns, I am still able to observe basic changes that occur in the age, even though I cannot see them. The problem is that my instruments can only detect changes that occur at a fundamental level, and it seems unlikely that an individual will be able to affect such an elementary change from within an age. 
The idea might be foolish. Still, there is a known weakness that may be worth investigating, an unstable anomaly that appears as a rift between two separate realms, the star fissure. But how this feature might be exploited, I cannot say. Sending someone to Riven also means that once signalled, I will have to leave my writing in order to take a real linking book there myself. Provided my father is safely out of the way, this should take little time. Assuming the island does not incur any serious damage during my absence, I should then be able to return to Kavir and hold it together long enough for Catherine to evacuate the remaining islanders. Predetermining a specific signal may simply be impossible, but I'm afraid there can be only one answer to the question of whether or not I should send my friend to Riven with a way out. The potential for success will be greatly increased and the possibility of disaster greatly diminished if the prison book is all that is taken there. My father is no doubt expecting me to bring a linking book to Riven. May he not be disappointed. I mean, you know, I'm I'm really glad that the stranger was 100% willing to help Atrus out in this situation, right? Because it would be really awkward if Atrus, you know, had sent his benefactor to a dying age with no way out, uh, you know, w without him, like, explicitly agreeing first, right? <laughs> oh, shoot, that's the end of the book. Cool, we're done. Wow, that journal was a lot shorter than I remember it being, but maybe that's just because we're a lot more used to reading much longer journals now. Who can say? Some of the pages do indeed have the tear stains on them. Quite right. Yeah, good thing too, right? So... This is a very, very, very minor, I wouldn't even call it criticism, an observation of the differences, right? I really like, in the original Riven, how Atrus explains what's going, holds the book up to you, and as the camera pans into the book, the music swells and the title of Riven comes towards the camera right? And it's all choreographed so nicely. It matches the music so well. Um, I didn't get the same vibe from Atrus linking away and then we're left there and we touch the book ourselves in our own time, you know? Like, yes, we do still get the title, but, like, the music doesn't build up in the same way and... I don't know. Yeah, not sure. Right. Now, if you've seen my original uh, playthrough of um, Boiler Island, you'll know that we kind of solved this one accidentally the first time we did it, so... Oh, wow. It's a very, that's a very smooth... That's a very smooth knob, that is. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Jaffras and Spiper both in agreement with me. Well, I mean, it's... Huh. Apparently not a terribly controversial opinion, then. Now, we've got a wood chipper here. So there doesn't really seem to be like an... Oh, no, 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 the on The on button will be up here, I suppose. But I don't think the wood chipper... ...did terrible. Oh, no, shoot. No, 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 no. I don't want to get on it. No, no, no. Okay. 
there have been some sacrifices made to make the game translate better to VR. Yes, 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 of course, of course. There are a few golden rules with VR design, right? One of them being, in general, don't take control of the camera away from the player because you are just going to make people terribly, terribly ill. Now, interestingly enough, I mean, I do, I do still have my VR headset kicking about, but, um... Well, oh, yeah, I mean, ever since last summer, where I started getting motion sickness, um, I just haven't really, uh, just haven't really given it very much of a go, to be honest. Uh, right, we open that up. We pull this. Wait, hang on. Hmm. Okay, so that's like an exhaust pipe or something. Yeah, let's, let's open that up. Let's open that up. We've got two ways here. This pipe, which comes out of here, can go up, but that's maybe is what we want, maybe isn't what we want. We've got to turn the flames off first. Oh, it's like flames off and then you drain the water. So actually, maybe you need to bring it to the middle there. There is a specific gameplay reason. <laughs> the speedrunner ending. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, that's now doing something. Aha! It's raising a platform. Well, hang on, wait. That platform, now that that's raised... Hmm. No. One issue pointed out with the new intro is that Atreus linking away is weird, because in the original, he urgently needs to keep writing and patching the Riven book. But in the remake, he just links away. Yeah, quite right. Ah, here we go. But that has not opened the door. Well, the flames are still on. We still need to turn the flames off somehow. this way. Hmm. Okay, so coming through here, through this pipe, going to pump water back in. Oh dear, I'm really fumbling here. Right. 
This one appears to only raise the platform up and down. Well, I'm assuming we're going to need the platform. Okay, turning this to the left will drain the water if the exhaust is open. But it will fill the water if the exhaust is closed. That did something. It moved the it moved the floor slightly, moving that back. Hmm. Now I'm pretty sure the door opened automatically. Originally. Hmm. Right, okay. We're on the hunt then for some other button or lever, I think. Or we need to fiddle with this valve over here some more. Hey, we've got Pack NW Fall Star in the chat. Hello, good evening to you. Hope you're having a great start to your week. So if I were to move that there, what does that then give me? Well, the red light is still on at the top. Oh, wait, we have another switch right here. Oh, well, that's turned the flames off. Oh, excellent. Great. Well, um, in true traditional fashion, we shall now leave this island for the next two episodes and come back much, much later. Oh, no. I said that with such confidence, but the door is still not open. F. <laughs> Damn it, game! Why you do this to me? Oh. Oh. That's awkward. That's awkward, that is. <laughs> right. Okay, we're going to go up this ladder, we're going to check it out. Imagine if it needed a real-time minute to cool down. Oh, don't say that. No. No. These, these... These, these guys don't, don't need any assistance with their weird puzzle design. Like, the... <laughs> the button in Uru that literally is spoiler alert for Uru, incidentally. Oh, hey, wait, we can walk this way now. This wasn't available previously. That button in Uru that literally just has the number three written on it, but in Dene. <laughs> and the clue is you have to press the button three times. That's, that's, the, that's the clue. <laughs> Oh, Justy303 gifted Spiper a subscription. Thank you very much, Justy. Thank you, thank you. Mod should be subscribed. Do you know what? You're absolutely you're absolutely right. And and I should also give Spiper. I should also give Spiper a little gift as well. But yes, um, thank you very much to Spiper, who is 
our new channel mod, as as of today, in fact. I just made him a mod uh, just before the stream. Um, yes, yeah, Spiper has agreed to sort of help out in terms of being a, let's say, a mediator in terms of when is a hint too much of a hint, when is a hint sort of okay, and, um, and Spiper is, you know, uh, a, a person with, a, I think, a good, a good balance in terms of when I might be struggling a bit too hard. Say. Is there anything in here? Wait, hang on. Fancy lens. No. Hmm. Well, okay then. Um, right. Oh, really? This is reused music from the vent in the original. Do you know, I tried listening to... We went on a road trip at the weekend, which is why there was no stream on uh, Sunday this week. Uh, we went up and uh, visited my father at the, uh, at the coast, because it was his birthday. And um, we did try and listen to the Riven soundtrack in the car. To call it ambient would be an understatement, for sure. Um... You know, I, I do love Robin's music, of course, but I think I do have to give it to Jack that I think Mist 4 might be my favourite soundtrack from the series so far. So I have a feeling that maybe we don't need that here. Maybe... Maybe we do need the gas coming through this way to power the door, because maybe the door's pneumatic. Yes, the light's still off, the fire's still off. Oh! <laughs> oh jolly good. Here we go. Sorry, I totally missed. We had a first time chatter. Uh, Laurie Sand 82. Love that I catch your stream for the first time. Just in time for the one puzzle you did by accident the first time. <laughs> quite right <laughs> so we had to do we had to do that one authentically this time <laughs> yeah i got a lot of comments i got a lot of comments on that video the first time round <laughs> it's like you solved the puzzle and then you never opened the door it's like i didn't know i didn't know i was just fiddling around with stuff So it's less of a one-way drop this time, which may or may not be important. <laughs> I don't think you could pay me to step through that door in real life. Yeah, no. I've seen enough Saw to know how stepping willingly into a giant furnace is going to go. Like, mm, 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 mm. nope, 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 nope. Choral chanting is the rather big divide between the two. Ah, yeah, you know what, right? I'm going to give you that one. So, there are some parts of the Mist 4 soundtrack that I am not down for. <laughs> not down for at all. Like, um, yeah. 
I'm 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 afraid to say it, guys. I'm I'm not I'm not that big on Peter Gabriel in in a missed soundtrack. I'm sorry. I know that's a really controversial take. <laughs> but yeah. However, however, to Tamana, maybe one of my absolute favourite pieces of music in the whole of the Miss canon, right? To Tamana is absolutely it's it's excellent track excellent track you like the change to the red light much easier to see than the gauge in the original see that's what i was talking about the gate i didn't even know the original had a gauge so there we go <laughs> exile had a good bit of chanting as well didn't it i assume the drop was considered vr inappropriate ah of course of course Yes, I need to be more mindful, of course. A lot of the physical changes in this environment are going to be VR-related. Okay, right. The mo these are the most famous doors. The most famous doors in the whole canon. Yeah! Yeah, it's still there. Nice. Nice. It's interesting. I'm not sure if the fact that they slide in a weird in a weird arc makes it more or less likely that you would twig that there's something behind them. But I'm glad they didn't change those doors. <laughs> Your favorite soundtrack of the Mist series is Uru. Huh. Well, here we go. This is going to be a bit different then. Oh, wow. There's a lot more to this than there used to be. Well, we don't have the gas coming in this way. Oh, is it going to pump the water out of this? Because that path is currently under the water. Well, let's go and sort that out. We can always visit Gen's summer house later. Frog catcher replaced by whole cavern. The more immersive they try to make it, the less freedom they can give the player. Can't crawl, can't kneel down. Well, here's the thing. In VR, can't stop the player. You know, like, one of my favourite things to do in VR is literally crouch down and try and, <laughs> try and see under things. But, um, yeah... One of my one of my favourite experiences in VR when I when I did play VR more was um, Skyrim in VR. Actually, really enjoyed playing Skyrim in VR. Um, although it's a little bit odd because I don't know if it's intentional or not, but all of the character models are slightly small in Skyrim VR. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the character models themselves haven't been changed at all. But, like, the player character is a little bit taller than most of the other people in the world. I mean, I'm not a particularly tall guy, right? But you calibrate the thing to your own height so that, from your point of view, it feels like you're standing on the ground. But I certainly found that, like, most of the NPCs were not, like, that much shorter than me. But, like, I, I felt like a big guy wandering around. I don't know if that's, um, if that was an intentional thing or not, really. Ah, in fairness to the Mist 4 music, curtains shouldn't really count because Gabriel wrote it back in the 80s. And he just licensed it to the game. Yeah, that's fair enough. 
These ears give me an extra inch. That's true. <laughs> Alright, let's drain some water. Incidentally, right, for those of you who are sort of, for those of you who are watching in the future, what you will notice, right at the bottom of the screen, because I, I, I will get comments on that, right, if you look right at the bottom of the screen, you will see that there's some pixelated artifacting happening on the bottom of the screen. That is not a recording artifact. That is actually literally the game. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the game ever so slightly larger than the bottom of the screen there. So you guys shouldn't see that anymore. That will probably, uh, probably make the viewing just a touch more, um, <laughs> just a touch more comfortable for you guys. Um, I noticed it when I was editing episode one. And I only remembered it just now, to be honest. Ooh! Okay, we've got a rock. We have a rock and a tiny basket for the rock. Rundling along a track here. I want to see where we're going first. Huh. Yeah, that's taken us somewhere quite different. Hmm. Well, on we go. Right, so we're loaded into the elevator. And I think then all we have to do is we'll press this thing and maybe it will work. If I stop midway up, okay, it lets us stop wherever we want. Well, let's go. Uh, yeah, it feels like we could actually fall through that if we really tried. <laughs> We have got Pens of Fate, Trespass, in Gen's Laboratory. Wait a minute... This isn't the way to Gen's Summer House! What? <laughs> Confirmed Pet Rock Simulator. The entire cave is very abduction. I see, I see. They decided to show you a part of Riven that's only mentioned in the journals in the original. No more frog catcher fan vent. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. Yes, we originally got into Gen's summer house from, um,. Riding the, uh, going through the vent, wasn't it? Aha! Yes, because this door is locked from the outside. I see. I see. I totally misremembered that. I totally misremembered that. I thought we got, I remembered we got into the summer house 
by finding the door behind the door. But no, you're, you're right, it's, it's locked from the outside. Okay, cool. Well, that's awesome. I'm just trying to think. Was there then another path back there that we didn't go down? No, I don't think there was. Well, there's obviously what's behind the other door back here. I mean, now that we've unlocked that, we'll go back to that in a minute. But yeah. So. A relatively significant side effect of the removal of the vent is that you don't need to figure out the door behind the door to get into the lab. Yes, you're right, because we only turn off the vent by cutting its power on the other side of that door. You are absolutely correct. You're probably still going to need it for this one, though, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Now, here's the thing. We know, if we go back to our notes, that Crater Island is this one here. So let's see if we can open this one up. Mm, I think we missed that. I feel like those are way more forgiving in uh, in this version as well. I remember with those, we were having real difficulty hitting those, even if we knew what we were trying to hit. This has completely nerfed the door puzzle. Mmm. Yeah, yeah. In that respect. I mean, the door puzzle... Yeah, we pretty much got baked by the door puzzle, I think. Like... I think we had to have some pretty strong hinting in our original playthrough to get the door puzzle. Um, I don't remember exactly... I don't remember exactly, but, um, yes, yeah, certainly, um, okay, so we've got the lights on now. Now, we don't really need this, because all that's in here effectively for us is, um, fast travel. We just need to turn the lights on there, and we're, we're good in this one for now. It's definitely, like, physically moving you somewhere, right? but I'm not really sure how, because the one on Alcatraz Island clearly has nothing underneath it. So it's not like it's an elevator, I don't think. But, um... <clears throat> yeah, so... Someone will, uh, Someone, I'm sure, will remind in the... either in the chat or the comments section. But yeah, I, I recall we needed some pretty strong wrong hints to um, to get the door behind the door when we played the original. You do still need to learn to count though. My biggest criticism of the remake is how it ruins some of the best puzzles. Learn to count to 24 to open the mini dome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the dome should have had a combination. I am tempted to agree with Spiper on that one, you know. Um, but, on the other hand, though, I do like the way that the game 
turns the narrative around and sends you to Alcatraz Island as like the very first thing you go and do. Uh, now, if I recall correctly, this bridge over here is the one that we've destroyed previously. Hmm, it is, it is. Ah, oh, but you know what? Ah, oh, whilst we're here, kind of tempted to take a screenshot for the thumbnail. <laughs> Do you know what? So I was I was on the official Cyan Discord earlier, and I'm actually going to need to I'm actually going to need to change my options, aren't I? Uh, what is it? Interface. Smart cursor visibility. Right, we turn that on. I was on the Cyan Discord earlier, and I was asking, you know, like, is, is there a press pack for this game? Is there, like, a press kit anywhere? Because it's, it's, like, it's not obvious on their website if it is. And, um... Uh, yeah, it's not obvious if there is. Uh, I just got flashed up that there was a uh, that there was a, a comment held for review. Uh, yeah, that should obviously be sort of let through. Yeah, you got auto modded. You got auto modded, mate. Um, so um, yeah, because the most games, most most games, um, appreciate the fact that like you kind of need to advertise the game and so like various publications and you know humble youtube creators and so forth need things like your logo on a transparent background and things like that to be able to make thumbnails with um and but as far as i can tell there just isn't a press kit on the cyan website at all i really have no idea how to make this hand invisible incidentally um, because it should, it should be turning invisible with, ah, oh, no, ah, oh, right, 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 okay, 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 I've got to walk to make it invisible. Good, right. Take a screen grab. There. Um, and... Yeah, and I asked on the Discord, and apparently there is a press pack. You have to email them and say, I'm a member of the press, can I have a press pack? And they'll send it to you. And it's like, usually it's just something you download off the website, to be honest, because it's like, why would you send that out to people individually? That strikes me as something that you are literally just adding more work for yourself, um, when it can just be like a zip file that you just let people download. Because... All it is is like approved screenshots in high resolution with like the interfaces, uh, you know, scrubbed out and so on, and your logos and your name and whatever, right? Like there's nothing um, particularly weird in there. Usually. Um, if you meet Catherine right away, she probably shouldn't have any idea who you are yet. Yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, you saw that convo when I first posted and thought it was funny someone responded with pictures from OG Riven. Do you know what, though? I absolutely love those pictures from OG Riven, and I kind of wish I knew about that before, um, uh, before I, uh, did my Riven, um, uh, my Riven thumbnails, because I think some of those, particularly the wire frames, I think they look so cool. Yeah, and, and that would make for, that's just like a really unique thumbnail as well. Uh, during the Starry Expanse project a few years ago, they were specifically worried about this bridge. Node clicking distracts from the fact that it is way longer than any other walking stretch, but you can't escape that dullness in free roam. I would say snake eater it, you know? Record like a unique piece of music that takes the length of time it takes to walk the bridge that plays as you walk it. Um, if you've ever played Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> Does this remake give you the option to keep the old QT live characters? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Um, so yeah. Right, let's start over here with the journal and we're gonna see uh, what we have. We've got darts, we have orbs, we have a teapot. Hmm. I 
I wonder why we want to bring the rock. I can still hear something else going. Incidentally. Yeah, I wonder what the rock is for. Well, okay, no more dilly dallying. Let's go. <clears throat> so this is some date in the past. I have been cataloguing the natural elements of this age for many years now, yet I still continue to find evidence of the number five. As a boy, it was very clear to me that it held a place of special significance to the Dene society, from the ancient heraldic emblems of the ruling elite to the humble homes of the commoners, it was ubiquitous. Its presence here is clearly a direct reflection of the minds that authored the texts I used to compose this age. Further proof that through their art the Dene masters were indeed creating the marvellous worlds they wrote and not, as many have mistakenly thought, merely forging links to pre-existing worlds. While all of my ages have been based on Denis designs, I see now that the ones most vested with the power of five are also the most beautiful, the most perfect, and undoubtedly the most structurally sound. I have yet to determine how the Denis colour symbology reflects the superior design principle, Whilst ostensibly a six-colour system, I am convinced that there must be some deeper connection to the number five. I will continue to investigate. The Y-Tram traps have been particularly fruitful this year. Apparently, the breakup of the islands has not adversely affected the subterranean ecosystems. Unfortunately, I imagine the rebels are also experiencing a generous harvest. No shortage of poison for their darts this season. Such vexing issues aside, this unexpected windfall has allowed me to refine a particularly pleasant extract for my pipe, one that is smoother than any other in recent memory. I have reluctantly decided to suspend my inquiries into the unusual behaviour of the water of this age, as there are more pressing matters that now demand my attention. For future reference, however, my investigations have revealed the following. I believe the remarkable properties of the water to be caused by a microbe that resides within it. I am imagining a mobile, unicellular organism, but one with a structure that allows it to manipulate bits of water. The aggregate effect of which is that the composite body of water is able to deform itself in response to threatening conditions. Prolonged exposure to extreme heat a period of extended boiling, for example, seems to kill them off, which would explain their dramatic aversion to even moderate rises in temperature. There is still much to learn, however, regarding this peculiar phenomenon and its possible uses. Construction of the images has proceeded without fault. Remarkable how easy it was to adapt the Denis technology to mimic that of the Armad, the two cultures must surely have crossed paths at some point in their histories. It may even be that Kita was a direct descendant of the Dene. How else to explain the redemptive depth of, one, of our connection? But that's all pointless now. Maintenance on the steam vent caps completed. I am extremely pleased with the continued success of the system, another example of the superiority of Denis technology. Ironic that Atrus and Catherine's meddling unwittingly provided me with such a convenient source of power. I am certain now that the fissure was an unexpected byproduct of the changes they wrote into this age as part of their machinations to trap me here, and that Atrus never intended for the book to be lost among the stars in the process. Better that a linking book be destroyed than to risk it falling into unknown hands. Had they foreseen the creation of the fissure, they surely would have sought another solution, as the ensuring cataclysm may well have consumed the entire world had I not managed to intervene. That is absolutely true, incidentally, I'm pretty sure. Catherine would never have knowingly taken such a risk, and surely my son, given his own dearth of 
His own dearth of vertebrae had only meant for Riven to become my prison and not my tomb. I am discontinuing regular observation of the expanse beneath the fissure. I have tracked the stars and have proven that their paths are cyclical. But without proper instrumentation, there is nothing more I can learn. My theory, however, remains unaltered. The fabric of this age was breached in a way that permits matter to be... hospitably exchanged between two discrete yet overlapping spaces. Yet the attendant paradoxes defy the laws of conventional physics. The great column of wind that formed when the rift first appeared suggests a vacuum, as one might expect in space, yet my early experiments seem to confirm the presence of breathable atmosphere. The Datrus momentarily threw himself into the void as further evidence that it might possibly be safe to venture into, but without knowing its true nature, I simply cannot take the risk. It is too difficult to say what would happen were I to reopen the fissure now, but it is highly probable that the results would be disastrous. My hopes have been dashed again. The latest ink formulation has proven yet another in a long list of failures. Frustrating to expend so much effort constructing a linking book only to end up destroying it when it refuses to function. Too often has this lab grown uncomfortably warm with the flames of these never-ending disappointments. Without my reference library back in Denis, a properly orthodox linking book may simply be beyond my means, but I simply cannot burn another book. There must be another way. Pens of fate. Late last night, while pondering these in terminable setbacks, I went to light my pipe. The fine marble got away from me, however, and rolled across the gateway image of the open book before me. If the consequence of this had not been repeatable, I would not have believed my eyes, as the marble left a faint yet definite trail of increased clarity in its wake. The change did not last long, but it was unmistakable. If I could find a way to boost the energy output of my fire marbles, it might be possible to suppress the variance enough to facilitate a stable link. But how? A spatial anomaly occurred yesterday, about five spans above the mouth shore of Temple Island. A breach of stars seemingly identical to the one beneath the fissure. It began as a small cloud-like hole, which then com commenced to expand in random surges. With some effort, I was finally able to contain it within runic plates, similar to the ones I devised for the fissure. I believe it will hold, but the appearance of a new rift is troubling, and yet it has also left me with the most uncanny feeling that something fundamental has shifted in my favour. I believe it may be time to give this inexplicable mystery a second look. I have erected a small dome, a pressurised airlock, mounted upon the contained breach. This has allowed me to safely conduct tentative forays into the expanse without subjecting Riven to further invasion and the destruction that would certainly attend it. Right. So the domes are not teleporters, they're not elevators, they are rifts to the star fissure that are forming. And then and, and they're big enough that you can walk through them and he's created an airlock. Right, so that's what we are. That's what we are. That's what we are doing there. It is bafflingly improbable space, yet surprisingly more accommodating than my initial observations had led me to believe. Breathing is indeed possible within it, yet I cannot say it is respiration as I am used to it. Rather, as nonsensical as this is going to sound, it feels at times as if the expanse were breathing me, and in the process imbuing me with a sense of endless possibility. At last, the breakthrough I was hoping for, after my first full day of experiments in the expanse, I was astonished to discover that the fire marbles in my coat pocket had come to fluoresce. A quick strike test confirmed that their energy levels had increased significantly, and their charge has lasted longer than I would have thought possible. 
In a clear act of divine providence, the expanse has given me the final piece of the puzzle, an apparently boundless energy source that I should be more than sufficient to rectify my linking books. But I must work quickly. Two more breaches have occurred in the interim, each one more aggressive and difficult to contain than the last. Time, I fear, is running out. The breach is now number five a sure sign that I am on the right path. I have connected the domes in each of them via a nexus of pathways within the expanse, which will also serve as an inter-island shortcut as I continue my work on my enhanced fire marble complex. The loss of two more men yesterday has made it clear that the full spectrum of energy is too great for even my finest fire marbles to contain so I have decided to break it up into five discrete frequency ranges, which will later be recombined for application into the book. I have installed five charging stations within the expanse, each one calibrated to imbue a blank fire marble with a separate band of total energy needed. A pneumatic tube system will then convey the charged marbles to the Great Gold Dome on Riven for recombination. Freedom is nearly within my grasp. Take a picture of that page. And let's go and add it to my thing. Beep, bump. There we go. The problem of how to return to Riven has been settled. Reckon has proven his usefulness over the years, at times merely rivaling my own and nearly rivaling my own engineering prowess. He and his team will have the honor of being the first to link to the new age, bringing with them the necessary materials to build a vastly simplified version of the book apparatus, which I have personally designed. If they do not return within a reasonable amount of time, I will revise my design and send additional men until they get it right. Should they founder, however, I am prepared to sacrifice every last man on Riven to continue the effort. This cannot fail. At long last, a variable loop has been established. A viable loop has been established. After an eternity of toil and sacrifice and an unconscionable preemption of the ages, I might have fathered. I have finally linked to a new age. Presumably, the 233rd. It is a bleak and barren world, perfectly suitable for my purposes. By closely comparing the real with the written, I believe I will soon be able to create a more appropriate age from which to relaunch my mission. For now, however, I will move my office and living quarters there so that I may safely continue my endeavours without distraction. Although it is but a stepping stone, 233 is an utter triumph. To think that I have accomplished in a matter of years, under extremely adverse conditions, what it took my Denis ancestors centuries to achieve. I caught one of my assistants thumbing through this journal today. He will certainly never do it again. But I'm glad I chose to write this in a language these people cannot decipher. English. Oh. Perhaps it's time I reviewed security measures with each guild master. No problems expected from the builders, maintainers and surveyors, but the bookmakers and educators may need a bit more motivation. More reports of spirit sightings. It seems that under Catherine's leadership, the Revels, or Black Moiety, as the villagers stubbornly insist on referring to them, have attained a new level of sophistication in their terror tactics, renewing their campaign to intimidate the weak-minded into joining them by preying upon their cultural superstitions. I suppose I should be concerned by this, but it strikes me as almost laughable if the Revels wish to dilute their ranks with... Dimwit, then who am I to stop them? Dimwits is a is a word you don't often hear used nowadays. <laughs> Chemical analysis of one of the rebel knives has yielded curious results. The metal contains elements that are unlike anything I've encountered on the islands. 
It appears the rebels have access to resources that I am unaware of, perhaps a mine or an uncharted island. Most of these knives have been found on the south side of the village, the same region that reports of people mysteriously disappearing have emanated from. I think a closer inspection of the area is warranted. The fact that the rebels deliberately leave these distinctive knives as a sign of their presence is concerning. They're growing bolder, as if they no longer fear discovery of their hideouts. Okay, pause there. I need to catch up on the chat, because we've got lots and lots and lots of chat to catch up on. So... The bridge solution they chose, though, brutally pragmatic. It's the solution Gen would have chosen. <laughs> The Armad. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the Armad. I don't remember them being mentioned uh, other than here so far. I'd actually quite forgotten about them. Ah, the Y tram is named after Marty O'Donnell. Okay. I'm wondering if they redid Catherine's journal font. That is one of the most difficult to read in game. It's, as I say, it's the hardest puzzle in the whole of the game. Somewhat weirdly, Cyan staff explained the runic plates reference in some detail in 2023 Mysterium. That commentary makes more sense than what his journal actually says. All right, okay. This dome explanation made a lot more sense to me than the original, especially given the value of linking books to Gen. Why would he waste four for fast travel? Yes, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Linking books can be much smaller than descriptive books, so they do take up fewer resources, true. But then with a linking book completely unprotected in the middle of a golden dome, it can easily be stolen or destroyed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fair. Okay, back to the book. Recent measurements indicate that the movement of the islands has slowed dramatically. My previous estimates predicted a total collapse in approximately three months, but with the new figures I am no longer certain. I have nearly finished writing the 234th age, and I have every confidence I'll be in a safe place to relocate to but it would still be useful to know what has caused the sudden halt in Riven's breakup. Is it possible that the age is stable after all? If so, I must discover how it differs from 233, which has already shown troubling signs of decay. Though further tests are needed, and yet, there is something about this that gives me pause. Could it be that someone is attempting to repair the damage to the fifth age at its source? I cannot help but think that the hand of Atrus is behind this somehow. And once again, I've managed to, uh, you know, continue my streak of taking a pause just before the end of the book. <laughs> so there is Gen's journal. Right, what have we got here? Hey, it's a little frog friend! Okay, no, I'm keeping you in. I'm keeping you in! No! Well, that's gone forever. Gen is definitely going to know I was here now. Ah, shoot. Alright, bad ending incoming. <clears throat> the term Ahmad does only appear here, but we probably learn most about them in the first couple of pages of the book of Atrus. Ah, shoot. I have read it. I don't remember. What have we got here? Hmm. Ah, this looks a lot like Cirrus's little statue maker device, doesn't it? Maybe we could try turning the dial. Maybe adjust the slider. Okay, never mind. Right. What do we got down here? 
Yeah, all right, let's grab you. So they're not colors now, they're numbers, are they? No, wait, hang on. No, there's definitely an equation aspect to these because look, you've got this plus three and that minus five and this plus four and that plus some number there. So, okay, right, we've got, to, we've got to work on that, clearly. And let's take a screenshot of this one as well. Yes, accessibility in the original, um, in the original Riven was pretty bad, considering all of the puzzles that required you to be able to see in colour. That is true. The counterintuitive that a greater strike yield the maximum never ceases optimal strike base value. Aha! Can we? Whoa. What's the furthest we can... Wait! We can move it out the way! <laughs> All right, fine. But don't. Right. Get rid of you. Right. I'm gonna paste you in, and uh, let's get you like this. And uh, you can also go because we're going to paste you in. Grab that. Right, so what do we end up with? Uh, fire marble, power marble, strike force compensation. The counterintuitive aspects of fire marble is that a greater strike force does not always yield the maximum energy output, never ceases to amaze me. Optimal strike force base value uh, something something mm -hmm. the fire marbles are much much bigger nowadays, aren't they? In my day, fire marbles were the size of actual marbles, and I'm pretty sure that in the Book of Atrus, Gen is like carrying a pouch of like a couple of dozen fire marbles, to be honest. So, I don't know. Fire marble size might be variable. Fair enough. We've got the knee uh, things here. We've got the knife here. And another thing to look at. Let's have a little look. Last week, one of my acolytes caught a rebel sniffing around the cemetery totem in the jungle. I'm keeping with the general ineptitude of my men. The dog was allowed to escape, but at least the fool had the presence of mind to bring me the object in question. It is a primitive eyepiece into which one of the native numbers has been set. Given the fact that their accused numeric system requires you to know which way a symbol has been rotated in order to read it, however, there is no way to make sense of it. It's probably an overestimation of the Moiety's intelligence to suspect that there may be some greater meaning behind it, but tomorrow I shall send a surveyor out to inspect the other totems, just to be safe. Excellent. Well, we've seen the totem with the missing thing, haven't we? Where is it? Ooh. So we've got a number here. Let's take a note of that in case we need it. It's a big number, though, to be honest. Right, uh, we can close that. Close, close. 
Oh, little starfish. Yeah, I'm assuming we don't need those. That definitely... If anything was going to be a secret drawer, it would be that for sure. But okay. Aha! Huh. Oh shoot, have we got 20 viewers? I don't know, I always keep my view count off when I'm streaming, but yeah, you're absolutely right, we've got 20. Oh, oh, it's the giant wooden thing is the thing. But yeah, 20, I think 20 concurrent viewers might be like the most we've ever had. So, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, I hope you're enjoying the stream. If this is your first time here, please, you are very welcome. Do not feel that you need to chat. We love all of our lurkers as well. And uh, feel free to also check out the YouTube channel. My bot is probably spamming the chat with all of the various links and things. But, um, but yeah, it's great to have you all here. Right. That is probably an even better thing to take a picture of. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, so, I have a feeling then that we have... If I were to look at my notes now, right... I have a feeling that with these totems, the thing I'm not sure with the Moiety numbering system is the fact that what we've seen appears to be like a three-pointed numbering system. Oh, do you know what? I've not actually made notes of the other totems, which, we, which we'll do next time we go back to Jungle Island. But these almost seem like a like a six pointed one. I don't know. Like that is not a one hundred and twenty degree wedge to my eyes, but couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you in honesty. Uh, so happy you could join today. You're in the state, so it's right in the middle of the work day. It just happens to be a slow day. Oh dear. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm I'm certainly not going to say anything. So we've got a dripping piece of water. A piece of water. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, look, it rotates. Is this just going to keep going faster and faster until it blows up? I don't know. This very much looks like... Is this the fire marble is powering the flywheel rather than the other way around, perhaps? Let's look out the back of the uh, summer house here. And... Um, and see what we can find. Oh, blimey. It's really interesting, like, how much you can see of the other islands, right? Great, isn't it? Several years ago, there was an incident that people now call Fluru, in which the flu made its rounds at Mysterium. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, there's a hidden achievement in this room. Oh, wow. Fair enough.
Here we go. We're going to make our way to Giant Knife Island. I can't remember what we used to call that. Did, what did we call that one in our first playthrough? I don't really remember. We had Alcatraz, Crater, Village, and Temple. I'm not sure. It's the one with all of Gen's uh, with Gen's underwater observation platform and stuff. Here we go. Tiny trains in the chat. Fluru, real shame for sure. Man. Yeah, I mean, ah, conventions are going to be a real hotbed. Yes, adventure time. He who numbers but does not name, visit every island in the Age of Riven. <laughs> Oh, was that was that only playing in people's left ear? That's weird. I'm not sure why that would be the case. Okay, right. Let's go up. Uh, let's go up this way first, and we'll go and uh, check out the other door later. <laughs> they give out an achievement for everything. Do you know what I was watching? Ah, oh, who's the chat? Who? Who's the chap who is is very very popular, right? One of you will know him. He used to work for Blizzard, and so most of his stories are Blizzard related. And often when he goes on a Segway, he pulls up Paint and he draws diagrams in Paint. I'm sure someone will know who I mean there, but um, but he apparently released a game. And he didn't want people to pirate the game. So what he did was he didn't give a way of saving the game at all. Instead, the save state was your list of Steam achievements. So he basically had like 100 or 150 Steam achievements or something like that. When the game booted, it would just check what achievements you had and would therefore know what state the game was supposed to be in. And it basically meant that it was unpiratable because you can't, like, you effectively can't emulate the Steam platform in that way. I think it's a really clever idea, to be honest. We have a first time chatter Clorox Bleach. That freaked your dog out. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes. So for those of you who don't know, I have some family that live in Germany and, and on our on our most recent trip to Germany, um, my uh, the grandparents of my daughter um, had a wonderful little train toy. Ooh. Interesting. Had a wonderful little train toy, and it played a little song that sort of translates to I am a tiny train, come on an adventure with me. And I thought it was so cute that I took um I took a little sound sample of it. <laughs> Do you know what? I will I will find out who it is and I will I will put them in the Discord. But, um, yeah, they, they pop up on my TikTok feed fairly frequently, let's say. Well, this is different, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, it's a game of, uh, it's a game of Rush Hour. Excellent. Okay. Right.
Well, let's move you up here. You're going to go this way. You'll go here, and then we move you across. Good. Now, you can get out of the way of these. Um, I'm going to try and pop you up there. Because you're going to follow it, essentially. And we're gradually going to make enough room to put you where you need to go. Okay. Do, 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 do. Up into the corner there. Yeah, and this is... Well, roughly speaking, it's how all the islands are laid out. Great. I mean, that's got to be worth a little screenshot, right? Um, for anyone who's not aware, Rush Hour is a is a physical puzzle game where you have little cars and trucks on a little grid and you place them down and you can push and pull the cars around and what you need to do is you need to get your car out of the um, of the traffic jam. Um, it's a fun little game, very good for children. This is interesting, there's a big thing which isn't here anymore. <laughs> The giant knife is still here, though. Well, ain't that a bit different? <laughs> oh, what was the most heartbreaking tragedy? I, I missed that. I missed that. The original puzzle is one of the greatest. The most heartbreaking tragedy of the Riven remake right here. Such an expertly crafted puzzle in the original. Yeah, the original puzzle is one of the greatest puzzles of all time. The nerfs are a bit unfortunate. No more central puzzle where you turn the 3D models round. Oh no! And no more broken viewer. Oh dear. Mind you, unfortunately, if you saw the original playthrough that we did... Um, hang on, is that... I guess... Well, the viewer is broken. It's just it's broken in a way that we kind of have to, I suppose, guess the... Uh... Oh! Oh wow, no. It just, it just tells us. Hey... Go and look at the dome rather than through the uh, scope. Wow. Yeah, okay. That was a lot easier than in the original, for sure. <laughs> look behind you. Oh, I missed it. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um, there is a moment of realization. So yeah, if if you saw my original Mist playthrough, sorry, my original Riven playthrough, you'll know that the broken Zeotro really stumped us for a long, long time because I had previously observed in the um, crater island that the looking at the rendering of the spinning dome was not a reliable way to try and work out what symbol was painted yellow because you have to be on the correct node for it to work otherwise it just shows you a generic spinning dome right um, which is a real shame, 
because I therefore discounted being able to look at the dome to work out the number uh, or to work out the colour rather as even being a possibility. Now as it turned out we still actually solved the fire marble puzzle anyway so no harm no foul but, um, but yeah but that was a bit unfortunate. Um, but there is but yeah being able to open the dome by being able to look at it I don't know yeah that changes it quite significantly. There is also a moment when you're doing the fire marble puzzle where you have a moment of revelation that the locations that it's asking for are indeed the positions of the dome. The positions of the dome. Incidentally, massive spoiler alert for the original rhythm. But to be fair, if you're watching me playing this, you probably either have already played the original rhythm and love it, or might not have any intention to do that. But, um... Yeah, the fire marble puzzle in the original Riven is, I would almost go as far as to call it a famous puzzle, you know? Um, and yeah, there is definitely a moment of realisation to it where you're like, this is deeper than it appears, you know? What happens if we enter the code we've just literally found right there into here? Like, this is the obvious thing to do, right? Great. It's doing a thing. Oh! Oh, we're going sideways as well. Access the hidden floor on Survey Island. Blah! Oh, that's actually pretty gross. Oh. Here we go. Oh, we're here, we're here. Gen's great glass elevator. <laughs> uh, Wark swam right under us, did we? Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Casualties so far, behind the door puzzle, counting to 24, and finding domes on the map. Yeah, like, well, even realising that the domes on the map is what you're trying to look for requires a little bit of extra thinking, right? You kind of have to realise that the domes are, A, visible on the map. Well, first of all, you have to realise what the map's even showing, right? Then you've got to realise that the domes are always visible on the map, and then twig that the domes are always fit neatly on a square rather than ever, ever cut. And that was kind of how I pieced together that, like, okay, the lotion of the domes is probably um, the really important thing. How long ago did I play OG Riven? We played it on stream last year. So, yeah, we played it in around, around about this time last year, I'd say. Maybe slightly later. It might have been, like, September, October. So it, it was literally, like, ten months ago or something. And that was a blind playthrough. Like, I've never played this before. My first ever time playing missed was as an adult last year in 2023 so um uh yeah and 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 that wasn't even on stream like my original missed recordings on the youtube channel that's just me mumbling to myself in in the void <laughs> um yeah it was actually the the amazing community was were the ones that were like you should play riven you should play Riven. And and at the time, I was like, oh, I don't really know, because I'd played Mist 2021, right? So I'd played Mist, I played Abduction, but I was like, oh, I don't know, a game from 1997? Bro, is that going to be a bit old? Like, and, and I sort of, you know, I said, okay, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And do you know what? Oh, bloody great, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody great game. <laughs> um, yeah, you played OG Riven for the first time last August too. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, so there's no chair then? What What do you mean? What What about Gen's propensity for a good throne? Huh. 
Who's this? Ah, something hanging about. Wait, hang on, wait, wait. That looked like it might have been important. Oh no, go back. Ah, shoot. Oh no, he's there again. What's he doing? So that... Is it on a loop? Yeah, it's on a loop, isn't it? No, it's not on a loop. You know, he's moving differently. Huh. Haha, <laughs> it's Gen's standing desk. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, no, I've totally binged the whole series. Yeah, we're, we're, we're up to Uru now. And uh, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to be really sad when it's all done. I'm going to be really sad once it's all done. But I mean, I suppose there's firmament. Right. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Someone can spin. Um, but yeah, after firmament, not sure, really. It's a giant knife. Um, I mean, there are obviously a lot of games that I'm very, very excited about. Of um, you know other games that I'm really excited about um, coming out in the future, particularly um, Nayar. Nayar. Um, not sure. Okay, throw that away. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of, there, there are, well, no, actually, to say a lot is not even true. There are some, um, you know, first-person immersive puzzlers out there that we can uh, totally play. But, uh, but, yeah, I'll be really sad once the, once the Mist series is all done and dusted, in honesty. But, uh, but, yeah. After a string of criticisms, we're now at a part that I like about the remake, the expansion of Cho's role. Yeah. Okay. Green. So, let's go and make some notes. So, green. My biggest criticism of the remake remains that the music stops every time I uh, move on to my notebook. Yellow. That is definitely an orange. That is a terrible O. Here we go. <laughs> the only problem you have with Naya is you feel the dev spends more time posting screenshots on social media than he does finishing the game. Yeah, but maintaining hype for your game is going to be real hard. Oh! Oh! It's our... Wow, that's another new way of spelling quark, for sure. But look, it's our, it's our fish friend. Oh, wow, he is big, isn't he? Oh, he's, give, he's giving, us, giving us the side eye. Nice. 
Okay. Uh, so that one was red up there. Cool, great. Uh, Clorox Bleach recommends The Witness. So yeah, we do have... Oh, we've got like the first seven episodes of our stream of The Witness up onto YouTube. But it was from my very, very early days where I wasn't really saving things terribly reliably, let's say. And so I've actually not got the end of that playthrough. But we certainly could go back to The Witness and do some of the other puzzles that it has. Avoiding spoilers there. Um... <laughs> If you want a wild attempt at a mislike, try the Polish series Schism. I have had that recommendation, uh, and that is on the list. That is on the list. Like, we're currently playing Rem on the YouTube, and Rem I'm having great fun with. Rem is like, oh, but Rem is hard. Rem is a hard, hard game. <laughs> so, yeah. Did the 1997 work look better? Maybe. I still have Rem 2 to 4. That's a good shout. Yes, Rem, Rem is actually an entire series, of course. So, uh, that's a good one. That one is broken. And that is blue. So is that your purple one this time round? Interesting. So that's blue, and this one, purple, question mark. And you know what? I've kind of really screwed ourselves over there, because obviously now we need to rotate these round. <laughs> yeah. So let's actually draw these out, okay? So we've got green, and then yellow is with the eye open slightly. Okay, and then O is with the line straight, and then red is going to be with the eye open slightly, but the line goes vertically. And then you've got, whoops, and then you've got another one, but now the line goes here and we'll call it purple question mark, and then Blue is you've got the eye open, but now it's open vertically instead, and you've got a dot here. Now, ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the same as what it was before. I don't know. I'm not going to check it, but, um, but yeah, one of the things I hypothesized about in the first game is, oh, maybe maybe the big twist is going to be that it's not like five colors. Because Gen talks about, oh, well, maybe there should be five colors rather than six. And of course, one of these is not like the others. Specifically, red is not like the others here. Because you've got orange is a 90 degree rotation on purple, yellow is a 90 degree rotation on blue, and then green is like your zero, if you like. Um, but I, I suggested in the playthrough, and one thing that we were thinking about for a while is, is there a seventh colour which looks like that? And... It never really went anywhere. We kind of abandoned that idea really quickly. But there we go. Yeah. Memory lane. But yeah, I believe we actually put it to the vote on the Discord, didn't we? Because there's Rem, Schism... And there was another one as well. Oh, I would literally need to look at my Trello board to work out which one it was. But uh, yeah, it was Rem Schism and... Um... It's another one from that era. Hmm. Yeah, can't recall. But um but yeah, but Rem Rem won the vote. Rem won the vote. Okay, we're gonna go through the other door. Um on this island here. 
Yeah, very few games are built around learning a language. One of my absolute favourite games I played last year was Tunic. Tunic is great. Brilliant synthesis of a Metroidvania Zelda-like gameplay with strong emphasis on puzzles. Really great game. High recommend. Um... In terms of other... Oh, Journeyman! That was it. Yes, Journeyman was the other one that was in the vote. I think it was Journeyman, Schism, or Rem. Here we go. Um, of course, you've got Chance of Sonar as well, as far as language learning puzzles go. That's a good one. Now, this is interesting. Wait a minute. No, there is a guardrail there. I was like, can we jump off that? No, there's a guardrail there. Interesting. We need to call this lift up somehow, I guess. Huh. Huh. Oh. A stick. But the stick does nothing. Oh, no, it does. It does do something. You just gotta wait long enough for the stick to work. Perfect. Uh, we have another first time chatter. We have Tom Dodd, 4598, finally asked the five missed games. I accidentally joined one of your streams live. I hope you're well. Uh, I'm doing great, thanks. I'm really enjoying this Riven remake, 100%. Um, so, episode one, incidentally, is going to be up on the YouTube this Wednesday. This episode, episode two, is going to be up on YouTube Friday. So we're going to have double episodes this week, just because of the schedule of the But, um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. And we have Tada for real has subscribed with Prime. Thank you very much. Thank you for the sub. Thank you. Incidentally, if you are watching on YouTube in the future, yes, that reminds me. I, I need to do a I need to do a little plug for the channel. I need to do a plug for the channel. If you're watching on YouTube in the future and you're two hours into this episode, and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider leaving a subscription. Because, oh! I was, well, I thought I got caught on a piece of scenery there. Um, if you are two hours in, oh, Clorox Bleach has also subscribed with Prime, thank you. Oh, hype train incoming apparently. Oh blimey. You have you'll have a limited time to earn exclusive emotes is what has just come up on screen here. Sub gift or use bits to get to the next level. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever actually done a hype train before. Complete level one with combined contribution of four tier one subs or sixteen hundred bits. Oh that's quite a lot. <laughs> but if anyone else happens to have a Prime subscription, then, you know, that I, I believe... Oh, this, this is where someone's going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm not really that familiar with hype trains. But I believe if you get a hype train, everyone in the train gets, like, an exclusive emote that you can't unlock otherwise. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, for the subscriptions. Okay, our friend here has just wandered off. Oh! No. <laughs> I saw the making of Riven documentary and the amount of effort they put in to this guy sitting on a green screen on a big rotating gimbal, right, so that they could composite him into the image later. And all I could think was... Mate, why why wouldn't you just like why why wouldn't you just like canonically have the thing just pointing the correct direction to begin with? And then you wouldn't have to like film him rotating around. 
but yeah. Um, but yes, if you are watching on YouTube and you're two hours into episode two, please consider leaving a subscription because, you know, presumably you're, you're enjoying it if, if you're two hours in, maybe. Or maybe you've fallen asleep. In which case, I hope you have a great day tomorrow. So, uh... The new Riven is great. They certainly seem to be rather more bold with it than the world with the mystery make. Totally agree with that. Overall, I like the changes they make more than I dislike them, but I'd be interested to see what you think. The changes have made it more approachable, I am. Let me think, let me think. So, the changes, broadly speaking, broadly speaking, I would say this is one of the best remakes that's, that I've ever played. Honestly. It's bold, right? They've, they've decided to t take a direction and they're really sticking with it, right? And there must have been a meeting at some point where someone said, well, we just want to do it like Miss 2021, right? Miss 2021 was reasonably well received. People basically just want Riven in 3D. And I think if they'd just done Riven in 3D, most people would have been quite happy with that. But to remake what is arguably the best puzzle game of all time. Um, changing a lot of the puzzles is very bold. And I've got to give them a lot of credit for that. There's a path that way, which we shall remember to look out. And mostly, I would say that I've really enjoyed the changes because it's surprising, you know, Right the way from the first change, where you go, ah, oh, we're not climbing under the door anymore, right? We're 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 removing uh, the hinge instead. It primes you into getting into a different headspace that you're not going to be just doing the same thing that you've always been doing. Actually, before going to that dome, I'm going to check out that door first. Um, so broadly speaking, I'm I'm a big fan. Of the remake. I'm a big fan of the changes they've made. Obviously, we've not seen the whole thing yet. And, you know, are there going to be some big casualties? Clearly, the animal puzzle has been changed. We don't know yet in what way, right? But clearly, there is a change there. Um, they've had to rely on the fact that long-term fans of the series know what the Denis numbers are, right? So that can't be a puzzle anymore. Um, but what they've done is they've introduced a new numbering system that you have to work out. So you're like, oh, great, okay, good. So that it doesn't mess with the canon, but it gives us a similar puzzle to solve. So I like that. Um, I'm going to hold off judgment until we do fire marbles. Because fire marbles. <gasps> submarine! Oh, yeah, submarine! Because um, fire marbles is. probably. my favourite puzzle in the whole game. Might be my favourite puzzle ever in any puzzle game, to be honest. So I might have to withhold final judgment until after we've done Fire Marbles. Do I plan on playing Siberia 2? I absolutely do plan on playing Siberia 2. Um, I didn't want to jump into Siberia 2 straight away after playing Siberia because Siberia was quite a long game. I think it ended up being like 16 episodes or something like that. And I felt that to give Siberia 2 a good, you know, a, a, an appropriate um, attention, I didn't want to roll into it straight after Siberia 1. I wanted to give it a break. So, um, and so that's why we started Rem instead. So I certainly am still planning on doing Siberia 2. 
It's just I want to break that series up. Uh, the game now seems more linear as well. They gently push you onto a path which probably helps with making the players feel less overwhelmed. Yes, that is very noticeable, actually. Um, the puzzles have now quite an order to them. I mean, like, if we break it down, we've now got, um, you know, in the original rhythm, you could leave the thing. You could do the pentagon room, the spinning pentagon room, after leaving, you know, initially, after leaving your cage. You could do the pentagon room, which would take you through into the dome, and you could do some bits and pieces in the dome. You couldn't get very far there, to be fair, without, um, without opening up the shortcut from Crater Island. So that's maybe not too bad but then you would get out onto village island pretty swiftly you could get to crater island basically straight away from village island or continue in the village um you know the animal puzzle is kind of findable and solvable pretty early depending so yeah there's a lot of different threads in the OG Riven, whereas this one, you basically are pushed straight away into the Pentagon Room, then into the Starry Expanse, then you've got the, um, uh, you're going to go to Alcatraz Island, then you're going to come back and you're going to open up the door in the temple, then you're going to go out, you're going to go to Village Island, the village is blocked off from you, so you can't really go very far in there. Um, yeah, it, it is it is noticeably more linear, for sure. Oh no, shoot, that just climbs us out. I, I, I wanted to check out the manacle, because there's manacles in here for some reason. I don't know. Um, has anyone played it in VR? Oh yeah, how do you even do note-taking in VR? That's a really good question, actually. Huh. Right. No. Ooh, right, we've got a we've got a something. Do you know what? I'm wondering if we shouldn't have actually just opened our shortcut back to Village Island first. Because <laughs> I know I literally said, oh no, we're going to do the other secret path first and then we'll come and we'll do that elevator. But like, now I'm wondering if this is actually going to be like the much, much longer path. <laughs> the demo didn't show that they'd changed too much, as you could only walk around the first island. So when I first saw the new Totem on Jungle Island, I was pretty surprised. You can't get here without the previous two islands. You can no longer knock the hut door. Hmm, not sure. When I saw a friend play through it for the first time, he hadn't played the original, it was very noticeable that they removed the puzzle of working out the door into the cave on Crater Island was two-way. As you now get into Gen's lab via the new cave. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed. So yeah, door behind the door gone as a puzzle. That's true. Um, watching a streamer in VR, not the best experience. Yeah, I can imagine that. Oh, hey! It's, uh, it's Gen's uh, fishing post. Right. So, I think we want to... Right, that's coming down. Hmm. I need to get this closed somehow. Oh, of course. We open and close it from the giant observation... Pl from the observation platform, don't we? I wonder what the middle one does. Do you reckon that calls the walk? No, it's pulling it back up. Hmm. 
well. I mean, there's not much we're going to be able to do with this uh, unless we actually close this from, um, I assume, close it from Gen's observation platform anyway. So that is fine. Let's move on. Now, here's a question. Is this basically now just go to which... Is, is this basically a fast travel? Just zip to whichever node you want to zip to? And actually, no, wait, do you know what, right? Why were we carrying that rock around earlier? I've just remembered the rock in the basket. Like, what was the point of that? <laughs> Maybe that will come into play later. <laughs> oh, this one has stayed lit. Huh. Well, okay, well, we'll check out all of them. Pour one out for pet rock. Did I abandon the pet rock? I didn't abandon the pet rock. It just didn't seem necessary. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> the difficulty of OG Riven just wouldn't work with most players today. Too many people would not be able to complete it. Hmm... Controversial take from Trank Triple Zero Seven. There, ah, uh, it's an interesting one because I think if you're the kind of person that goes and buys a puzzle, you're probably not an average video game enthusiast to begin with, anyway. Like, I think there must still be a market for hard puzzle games, right? Like, really hard puzzle games. What do you reckon this does? Oh! No! No, no, no! Oh. I thought it was a... I thought it was a press and hold, but no, it's just a click and it will do the whole thing for you. Well, this is... Bonk, bonk. Right. We're in the village, then. Hello. Hmm. I have to admit, I was noticing recently while playing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past that my patience and attention span is nowhere near where it used to be. I think we just accepted a certain amount of grindiness back in the day. Yes, we did. We did. Because when you went to Blockbuster Video on a Friday night and rented a game, that game had to last you all weekend. If you were playing Lion King on the Sega Genesis, the elephant graveyard has to last you a weekend, otherwise you're not getting your money's worth, frankly. Um, so, yeah, 100% games. Games just used to be um, a bit grindier, and, and I think that's... Yeah, I'd probably go with that. There's a lot more competition in games nowadays because games are cheaper and they're more accessible and they have different monetization methods like your games are now competing with games that are literally free right i mean like rocket league for example is barrels of fun i love playing rocket league i'm not very good at it <laughs> and i often get people telling me that i suck online <laughs> but it's fun Right, it's a, it's a really fun game to play. Um, and it's free. Your game has to be able to compete with something that's fun and free. So, like, you know, Fortnite, it's free. 
and that's just that's just a fundamental change in the way that uh, the monetization model for games works nowadays, right? Um, we're going to climb that ladder in just a second. We're going to go this way a little bit first because I think there's another bridge that we can knock down here. No, no, no. We've got uh, fishing, fishing lures. So yeah. Uh, the original was an awkward school bus. You wish they kept the room to extend the bridge. Hot take, they should have just made it hard anyway. When you buy a game, it doesn't promise on the game that you're guaranteed to beat it. I like that take, Spiper. I think it is pretty reasonable. Um, <laughs> Today, parents should be like, no driver's license until you beat the original Riven without clues. Oh, dear. Well, I wouldn't have done that, and I'm an adult. <laughs> I had to get someone to actually... Uh, I think, yeah, basically, it was it was pretty strongly hinted by the end there. This was not extended in the original game. Is this the one we can knock on, do you reckon? Knock, knock? No. <laughs> You're not sure the new Riven actually is considerably easier overall. Maybe not. I mean, it's 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 a hard one, right? Because you don't want to exclude your your key audience, yeah. Like hard puzzle games, you know, we have to accept the fact that hard puzzle games are a very niche market. Puzzle games themselves are a niche market, but hard puzzle games are a very niche market. That being said, there is a market for them, right? Because otherwise. Um, you wouldn't have such incredibly um, successful and highly acclaimed puzzle games out there. But you have to consider the overall size of the market that you're um, getting yourself into, you know? Because it's like... Gone are the days, whether rightly or wrongly, long gone are the days where a game like Myst would ever become the highest selling video game of all time like that is just not the reality of of the modern day world um and to be fair like i find it even kind of wildly baffling to think about like you guys know me i love mist i think mist is great i find it baffling to think that mist was the best selling pc game up until The Sims, right? That strikes me as crazy. That, like, what? There was never an RPG. You know, there was never a Dungeons and Dragons game. There was never a shoot. Like, Half Life came out before The Sims came out, right? Mist sold more copies than Half Life. I think. I think that's true. But anyway, yeah. What have we got here? This is new, incidentally. <gasps> is that where Pet Rock goes? Oh, okay, right. We get water. We're watering the tree, are we? There are four drips, so do we need to get, do it like four times? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> At least the bridge extension didn't get stuck like in Uru. <laughs> It was bundled with new CD-ROM drives, was it? Oh, well that kind of changes the equation a little bit, right? Because that's like saying that Tetris was the best-selling game on the Game Boy. It's like, well, it doesn't really count, you know, or that Mario Duck Hunt was the best-selling game on the NES. It's like, it doesn't really count if it comes bundled with your thing, does it? Commuter traffic would be horrendous in this village. That is absolutely true. 
Mist was a large reason CDs themselves became popular. See, now, I, I just, you know, nowadays, it, it just wouldn't have that kind of pull, right? But, but it is interesting to think how consumer tastes affect technology in that way, right? How the PlayStation 2 is broadly credited with the success of DVDs and how, um, uh, you know, because like my parents, for example, were very much in the camp of we don't need a DVD player, VHS is fine, I can't see the difference in quality between a VHS and a DVD anyway, right? And it's kind of wild to think how much inf impact the PS2 had there. The PS3 was instrumental in the adoption of Blu-rays because, like, let's put it this way, in... Um, Oh, I can't remember what year it was. It was, uh, it was around. It was gonna. It's gonna be around about two thousand seven, something like that. Um, at around by around about two thousand and seven, in the UK at least, they'd sold only about four hundred thousand. Or maybe this was worldwide rather than the UK, because actually these numbers are going to be a bit big for the UK. Maybe it was worldwide, but it was something like four hundred thousand Blu-ray players have been sold and a million HD DVD players have been sold. So you kind of go, oh, well, HD DVD is winning the format war there. Yeah, except for the fact that they'd sold like 5 million PlayStation 3s, and it was like, yeah, right. Bearing in mind the whole gaming industry was a lot smaller back then, right? Because, like, selling 5 million of a console nowadays is kind of absolutely nothing. But, um... Oh, hey, look, it's a smoky... Smoky Walk. Hello. Uh, huh. Right. We close the walk mouth. Oh, something happened there. Ah, we've got steam now coming out, which is going to push the water back for us. That's handy. That's handy. Okay. Mist was the best-selling computer game for nine years in a row. Wild, right? Was Mist the original Wii Sports? I guess so. Where am I supposed to be doing this knocking? I've not found a knocker that I'm actually able to interact with yet. In the original, it was this house that you do the knocking on, but I don't, I don't see it. Watching two of my friends play through Mist reminded me how iconic and unique the first hour or so as the game is when you absolutely have no idea what's going on. I should be able to knock on this door. You're not sure why it's not working. Oh, it's a different door. All oh, right, okay, fine. <laughs> we'll find it. We'll find it later. It's fine. Oh, it's the one near the paint bucket. Okay, okay, fair enough. We'll find it later. Guaranteeably, we're going to be coming back this way. Oh, blimey. I've lost track of time a little bit. It's already 25 to 10 here. So there we go. Now, we push this out. Oh, look, we got the thing. What is this up here? Oh, it's a microphone. Yeah, see. I know enough about I know enough about mic tech to see a shock absorber when I see one. Or to know a shock absorber when I see one. Okay. So Gen would stand here, I guess, would he? And address the people of the village. Oh, oh, Gen's on his little observation platform, moving the thing around, isn't he? I first want to thank my campaign manager. Oh, blimey. Well, I mean, it's election season the world over, right? We just had a, an election in the UK uh, just last week. We've obviously had the French um, election this week. Um, we've got the US election out in November. It's a, it's a busy year. It's a busy year for campaign managers, for sure. Right, there's something there. There's a door. 
we wouldn't have otherwise been able to get into. So my next stream of Riven will be next Monday at 6. Uh, not quite. It will be next Monday at around about 7.15. I don't know if the one hour difference you've got there is because of uh, like daylight savings time or whatnot. Oh. Oh no. We need to get down here. We need to, we need to move this out of the way. Then we can get over there. Fine. We can move that submarine out of the way. The odd experience of watching your election results on Sky News while fireworks were going off for Independence Day. Oh dear. Do you know what? It's kind of a little bit of a reverse... Um, what do you call it? Now here's the thing. If we, if we move this... Do we turn around? We do turn around. If we're turned around, does that give us... I, I mean, it probably doesn't, because the, the, the thing is fairly bilaterally symmetric. Like, I don't think that's going to give us the space we need to get around here. But okay. Um, yeah, it kind of gives... Uh, it, it's a little bit of a reverse Guy Fawkes night, then, isn't it? Because we, we just did our last election on the 4th of July, which of course is a big fireworks day for you guys. And I believe your last election was on a 4th of November or on a 5th of November. And of course in the UK, we celebrate Guy Fawkes Night on the 5th of November. Um, and, uh, and yeah, because I believe ah uh, someone... Ah, uh, someone made some kind of comment. I do not know who it was. It was probably on the news somewhere. But someone made some kind of comment along the lines of the fact that the UK was so happy with the Biden win that we were releasing fireworks to celebrate the election or something. Which was, like, so weird. <laughs> because, obviously, we celebrate Guy Fawkes Night every year. <laughs> It's nice to see we'd come round to see things our way. Our federal elections are between November 2nd to 8th. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, I, I see what you mean, I see what you mean. Um, yes, well, I mean, you know, I think it's, I think it's an incredibly interesting period of history, right? And, and all of the things that kind of led up to, uh, to the um, uh, the Revolutionary War there. Um, right, yes, we're going to go for that other elevator now. Ah, uh, did we... Uh, mm, did we actually want to leave that submarine somewhere more sensible, though? Because there ain't... There isn't a button to call it. We could have left that submarine somewhere more sensible. Let's open this shortcut first because I think we open the shortcut we open the shortcut then we can come back then we move the submarine somewhere where we can exit it in the village still and then we can go down that other secret um, secret path yeah most people internationally, of course, uh, know Guy Fawkes Night because of the reasonably underrated movie, V for Vendetta, which I really love. I think it's a great one. Even though the actual writer of the graphic novel was not a fan. Right, let's see. Open? Yes. Now, what does the button do? I, does the button just call the elevator? Probably. So now that this is open, do you think it's going to stay open? Might do.
One weird thing they did fix by changing the way the sub works uh, is the thing you ran into where the sub magically teleports back to the village. Yes. But that's actually kind of handy to avoid soft locking yourself, frankly. <laughs> Isn't it? Which we totally would have done probably once or twice during our previous playthrough. Okay, now... Let me remind myself, which one are we going for this time? For village, we are going for here. So. Uh, yes, we're going for the line. Uh, about there. Great. Yeah, they removed the hidden button outside the mouth it just opened. Mm-hmm. True that. And, uh... Yeah. R.I.P. button. Because in our playthrough in OG Riven, we found the button. We found the button on the wrong side of the door. And so we weren't supposed to find it. So, yeah. We have a new first-time chatter, Milo Fork. Okay, so it's completely gone. I thought that... I thought so when I couldn't find it. Guess there's no way to open it from the outside now. Mmm. And Clorox Bleach says that's the biggest change to make the game more linear. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. button. Because, yeah, you know, as, as we did on, on the OG Riven stream, we found the button first. We didn't figure out that the elevator could go down, so that's something we didn't get. But, um, but yeah, but it got us to uh, Gen's fishing spot early, and that led us to being able to get into the prison and therefore to the animal puzzle early, which is interesting. So that is now not available. If the animal puzzle is even still there, to be honest. Uh, strands of a web connect every bridge inside the starry expanse. There we go. Yeah, pour one out for the Riven speedrunners. F's in the chat for the Riven speedrunners, for sure. Um, okie dokie. Well, my friends, we're going to be at the end of the stream. Okay. So, we're going to say goodbye to YouTube in just a second, but have yourself a think. If there is a streamer with a special place in your heart who happens to be live right now, let me know who we should go and do the raid to. Okay. Um... Guide the raid, says Justy, it's to Kano. Consider the raid guided, Justy. Thanks very much for the recommendation. Okay, we are going to get out of here. Right. We are going to point ourselves in the direction of Gen's fishing spot. So we remember for next time that that's where we need to go first. Because otherwise we're going to forget and we're going to just wander off. Um, if you are watching on YouTube in the future, thank you very much. This has been episode two of Riven 2024. I'm having an absolute blast with this one. I'm enjoying the uh, chat. I hope you guys are too. Um, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Next episode, next week. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Okie dokie. Thank you all very much for coming along to the stream. Okay. I hope you've had a great time. I've had a great time streaming with all of you. Uh, we are going to set up a